Hey folks, Chris Van Viver here with Logic Pro Expert. Today I want to do a brief overview of the nuances of low latency mode in Logic Pro 10. Low latency mode is our way to mitigate or get around projects that are pretty intense have a lot of tracks and routing and plugins. So when we need to record that last vocal take, that last percussion track, low latency mode enables us to make sure that we're not experiencing latency, despite how much latency inducing activity is occurring in our project. But from talking to a lot of different Logic users, I know that there's some confusion as to how low latency mode actually works. There's some belief that maybe it doesn't work all the time. And, and that's not the case. There's just a lot of nuance involved with it. So let's dig in. Number one, we're going to assume that we have a project that has tons of tracks, tons of plugins, tons of routing, and I need to get this final organ track recorded for this song. But the problem is no matter what I set my buffer size to and the audio preferences, I'm experiencing latency when I'm trying to record. This is no good. So low latency mode allows us to turn off all the latency inducing plugins and routing in the signal path so we can record without latency. And if you don't see this button that looks like a speedometer, just right click in the control bar area, under modes and functions, just click on low latency mode to reveal it in the control bar. Okay, so at the moment we have the adaptive limiter. If I hover my mouse over the plugin, we can see it introduces 20 milliseconds of latency. And if we go to Logic Pro 10, preferences, audio, and under the general tab, plugin latency here, we have a limit or a threshold that determines when low latency mode decides a plugin or routing should be temporarily turned off when low latency mode is enabled. So we can turn on the mode from the preferences window as well. And the limit is set to five milliseconds. That means that all the plugins and routing in our project, if they exceed five milliseconds, things start getting turned off so we can record. And if we adjust the limit here, check it out. I'm gonna bring it up. We know the adaptive limiter introduces 20 milliseconds. Check it out. Boom. The adaptive limiter is now in the signal path if we need it to be. But with 20 milliseconds of latency, probably gonna have a hard time recording. I would keep it at five milliseconds or whatever works best for your situation. So let's turn off low latency mode and let's bump up the look ahead to 200 milliseconds. So there's gonna be a lot of latency now. I'm gonna play just a couple notes on this organ. Okay, so I'm getting latency. So I would turn on low latency mode now, right? But from here, this is where the story gets interesting. And these are the nuances that I want to point out. First, let's take a look at the output of the organ. It's being sent to bus 64, which is an auxiliary channel strip. And I've turned down this channel strip by 22 decibels. So we have a pretty quiet organ. In the send fields, I've also sent this organ track or the output of it to a headphone output on my Apogee element. So output 5.6. Now check it out. If I play without low latency mode, we see the audio passing through everything from the organ channel strip to the output auxiliary channel strip to the stereo output and even my headphone output. Now let's turn on low latency mode. And I'm going to start playing. Suddenly our organ is not passing through the next channel strip at all. It's just going straight to the stereo output. And that 22 decibels that I dragged down to reduce the level of the organ is totally ignored. And this is one of the big nuances. Any latency inducing plugins that are in the signal path, not only are those turned off, but it also causes our organ to skip any additional routing and go straight to the output. If I remove the adaptive limiter, let's check that out. Here we go. Our organ is going through all the routing as we intended it. So that's the big nuance or maybe hang up of low latency mode. If there's a latency inducing plugin in the signal path, doesn't matter where, our tracks are going straight to the output. So check it out. Let me bring back that plugin and let's move it to the output here, right? So let's turn low latency mode off and back on. Check it out. Doesn't matter. Our organ is going straight to the output. If I move the adaptive limiter to the output, check it out. It goes straight to the output, ignoring our adaptive limiter. Let me remove the adaptive limiter. So this is the big thing to keep in mind. But do you notice that output 5.6, my headphones are not receiving any sort of audio. This can lead some to believe that audio doesn't pass through for things like headphone mixes, because we can see that the send field has been grayed out, it's orange. So we don't see any audio passing to the headphones. Obviously, things like headphone mixes don't work during latency mode, but that's not true at all. Let me, in fact, set up the send to the output of my headphones. 
set it to full blast, check it out. Remember, this is a headphone output. This is not just an auxiliary channel strip somewhere in the project. In low latency mode, audio goes from the tracks directly to the outputs. In the case of routing this output to our headphones, unfortunately, the output, the auxiliary channel strip is being skipped over. So that's why it's not sending to the headphone output. When we set up a send from the track itself to the headphone output, you have audio going straight to your headphones. One other aspect that I just wanna point out, I'm using an Apogee element. And Apogee is one of the few, few companies that takes advantage of Logic's audio device controls. So if I set up our channel strip components, audio device controls, and let me just create a new audio track, and we'll go to input two, create. I just wanna point out this direct button that exists for certain audio interfaces that take advantage of the audio device controls in Logic. If you click on this button and you have your track record enabled, the audio from your device's input goes straight to the output. You don't even have to turn on low latency mode. You don't even have to mess with buffer sizes. You could leave your buffer size to the maximum, 1024, and take advantage of zero latency recording without having to mess around with low latency mode. So I just want to point that out as well. I hope this is helpful for smoothing out any confusion when it comes to low latency mode. Once again, I'm Chris Vandiver with Logic Pro Expert.